Hello, viewers! Today I tell you a story of mirrors that will reflect heavily on you, because wood now is common and cheap. Only a few centuries ago, cost a whole naval ship for a single piece. Let's take a look. Mirror, a tool, a mystic object, a thing which only function is to show things that are in its reach fascinates and determines consciousness. It has its beginnings in water. Full of calm, undisturbed water had to be the first mirror humans used. But water is hard to hang on a wall. That's why about 6000 years BC, in today's Turkey, our ancestors started to polish natural volcanic glass, obsidian. With metal age came metal mirrors. From 4000 BC, Polished copper started to be used in Mesopotamia. A millennium later, bronze mirrors appeared in Egypt and China. But for Egyptians, after a short time of experiments, polished copper and obsidian became the materials of their first choice. Chinese, however, for many centuries continued and polished the craft of bronze mirrors. The most famous are those from 2000 BC by Kija culture. Bronze mirrors were a norm for the European Greco-Roman antiquity and the Middle Ages. Around the 2nd century BC in China, TLV bronze mirrors became popular. They were called so because those letters were engraved on them. After the 13th century, the era of bronze mirrors gradually diminished due to the expansion of explorers from Europe and trade with Asia. If we are in China now, we should also mention speculum metal mirrors from 2000 years back. Speculum is a highly reflective amalgam of tin and copper. Such mirrors were unique and only the wealthy could afford it. It is in contrary to very cheap, questionable quality products of that place today. While polished metal mirrors were in use, people experimented with glass and metal coating as possibly more effortless way of producing and maintaining reflectivity of mirrors. Metal is easily scratched, mm, quickly oxidizes, and evenly polished gives distorted image. The first attempts of making glass mirrors from the first century are found in Sidon, today's Lebanon. Lead and gold leaf were used as coating. And yet, first glass mirrors were only an experimental curiosity. Still worse than metal, without good reflection, because glass technology was yet to be developed. Romans also experimented with blown glass and lead, but the real breakthrough of using silver and mercury in glass coating came in the 5th century from China. During European Renaissance, mirrors were already made by glass coated with tin mercury amalgam. The center of the 16th century mirror production was on Venetian island of Murano. For hundreds of years, Venice had a monopoly for mirror production in Europe using this technique. Those mirrors cost a fortune. A single mirror decorating some European palace was an equivalent of a fully equipped ship. For example, in the late 17th century, the Countess de Fiesc was reported to have traded an entire wheat farm for a mirror and consider it a bargain. For a century, tin mercury coating was the most guarded secret that finally was stolen by a French industrial spy. Saint Gobain factory in France quickly became an important mirror manufacturer, industrializing the process and making mirrors more affordable to the masses. And to imagine those <laughs> expensive mirrors worth ships and farms were still inferior in quality to today's cheapest mirrors found in every drugstore. The first modern blemish-free glass mirror coated with silver was created by a German chemist Justus von Liebig in 1835. He mastered the technique of applying a thin layer of silver onto a pane of glass. 
used chemical reduction of silver nitrate and wet deposition. It's all chemical hocus pocus, but it was cheap, safe in production, no toxic mercury vapors were released anymore, and finally, for the first time in human history, everyone could buy one. It's like mm, inventing the mass production of gold. Suddenly, those Venetian fortune worth mirrors were degraded to fancy decorated but poor quality of image pieces of expensive glass. Meanwhile, in the other part of the world, mirrors gained extraordinary dimension. In pre-Columbian Mesoamerican culture, mirrors were treated as portals to the realms that are seen but without interaction. Some could be used, however, as a means of communication with otherworldly entities. A bowl of water used as a mirror was to determine if a person would live or die. If a reflection of an ill person was dark, the soul already escaped such a body and death was imminent. Such divination was in practice among the Maya and the Aztecs at the time of the Spanish conquest in 1520s. The Maya used mirrors mainly for ritual scrying, fortune-telling, a divinatory tradition reserved for the elite. Those are mostly found in tombs and were probably meant to be portals to other world for the deceased. The first mirrors like those of Olmecs are from 2000 BC and were made from polished iron ore. They also used different ores and made concave mirrors that allowed them to set fire. Others, like the Maya, used pyrite, but it oxidizes quickly so such mirrors are not well preserved. In the 13th century, Aztecs started to use known in Europe obsidian mirrors to communicate with deities. For example, the name of the Aztec deity called Tezcatlipoca means smoking mirror. He was believed to be the embodiment of a polished obsidian mirror through which he observed the whole world and revealed his wishes to an Aztec ruler since those mirrors belonged only to the mentioned elite. Such mirrors were among the gifts that Hernán Cortés sent back to Spain. Mesoamerican mirrors had many symbolic associations. Mirrors made of stone could represent the eyes and faces of gods. Elements like mm, fire were given the form of flowers, petals, and butterflies around the polished surface. Pyrite mosaic mirrors had the characteristic lines which were associated with spider webs. The most obvious theme for the mirror was the sun. In the ancient city of Teotihuacan, mirror and warrior shield are basically indistinguishable. Mirrors were mostly worn on the back and chest and had the double use defending from not only physical, but also supernatural attacks. In today's mirror manufacturing, sky's the limit, but most common mirrors are made of glass and silver or aluminum. Acrylic or plastic are used in gyms, since they are unbreakable. Polished metal mirrors, a relic from ancient past, are still in use, especially in prisons. These are known as vandal-proof. The procedure of using boiling hot metal condensing on a glass pane is superseded by electroplating, chemical or vacuum deposition. Various shining metals are used, but no matter which is actually put on glass, chromium or nickel, the process itself is always called the silvering. The back of the mirror is later covered by some scratch-resistant substance, like paint or plastic. Mirrors have various uses apart from the obvious one. Some split laser beams to calculate distance in cosmic space. Some are used in advanced optics to make cameras, periscopes or telescopes. In general, optical science is so vast and dependent on mirrors that we will point out only the most interesting examples from our point of view. Most common uses are the car mirrors, allowing us to see the rear and side space of a car, including blind spots. 
Some of you, despite driving a car, may not know that those are also advanced mirrors. Some rear-view mirrors have a toggle to switch it during the night in order not to be blinded by a car driving behind us. Some newest cars have now electric night mirrors. Dentists use mirrors to take a look around our mouth before the torture starts. By the way, similar mirrors are used by mechanics for the inspection of tight spaces. A peculiar type of mirror is two-way mirror, also called <laughs> one-way mirror. It was patented in 1903 by Emil Bloch in Cincinnati, Ohio. In order to make this mirror work, as we know from police movies, one room with the suspects must be brightly lit and the room with the observers must be dark. If you change the lightning, the suspect could watch the observers without being seen by them. Two-way mirror literally works both ways. Apart from police, this type of mirror finds use in every form of inconspicuous surveillance. Hiding personnel or cameras from the eyes of the shoplifters, pickpockets, stowaways, but also reality show contestants. Teleprompters allowing TV hosts to read text and look at the camera at the same time are basically two-way mirror boxes put on those cameras. Sometimes two-way mirrors are used as low-emission windows preventing interiors from fading in sunlight. It may happen that sunlight doesn't reach every place people live due to land formation like high mountains and seasons of the year, making sometimes sunbeams angle impossible to reach land directly. That is why, from 2006, the town of Viganella in Italy uses 8 by 5 meters, which is 26 by 16 feet, computer-operated 100,000 euro worth mirror every winter. In 2013, Rukian in Norway did it as well. Fun fact! In the 1990s, Russians for nearly 10 years tried to literally place gigantic mirror in space to make eternal day. The project was called Znamia, it means banner. After a few attempts, including one successful experiment, they abandoned this idea. Some say it could have destroyed humanity, others say it could have granted rapid development of our civilization. We will never know that, at least for now. In 2006, a team of Mythbusters busted a myth about Archimedes ordering Greek soldiers in a battle of Syracuse to use bronze mirror or mirrors in order to burn Roman ships. Myth or maybe not? The modern-day Archimedes' name is Raphael Vignoli, Uruguayan architect whose buildings Vdara in Las Vegas and 20 Fenchard Street in London are documented to melt plastic cups, shopping bags, and seen swimmers in a pool in Las Vegas 2010, as well as melt one Jaguar and a piece of carpet in a barber shop in London 2013. It was due to skyscrapers concave curved glass, which has the ability to focus light. The phenomenon from 2010 was even called Vdara Death Ray or the Fry Scraper. London's building, earlier called Walkie Talkie due to its looks, after the events was nicknamed Walkie Scorchy. High rise buildings, skyscrapers, very often have mirrored windows so the interiors don't fade and streets below aren't in constant shadow. Mirrors are enthusiastically used by artists, mostly painters and filmmakers. But both those crafts used one thing, the Venus effect. A phenomenon in psychology of perception. It occurs when an actor or painted subject looks into the mirror, but we see his or her face. Wow, <laughs> unicorns even. This setting makes impossible for them to see themselves. They are actually watching us through the mirror. In paintings, this effect was to create the feeling that as we watch art, the art watches us. In movies, it was incorporated mostly to hide a cameraman and the rest of the movie crew. Some, like Istvan Oroch's anamorphic paintings, can be viewed only with the use of a mirror. Cinema loves mirrors, 
There wouldn't be Enter the Dragon's famous fight scene. Children and teenagers wouldn't challenge themselves in the 90s to call the Candyman. What? You talking to me? You talking to me? <laughs> and many, many more we could name. In literature, most worthy of mentioning in the theme of mirrors are William Shakespeare's play Richard II, which popularized the myth that breaking a mirror can't bring bad luck. Snow White by Brothers Grimm with illustrious Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Everyone must have heard of Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass. The Lady of Shalott by Lord Tennyson is probably the most famous poem concerning a mirror, through which the Lady of Shalott can see people of Camelot, as a curse doesn't let her see Camelot itself. And since Bram Stoker's Dracula, everyone knows that mirrors don't cast the reflection of a vampire. Hell yeah, there wouldn't be a proper disco mm, without a disco ball. You couldn't take five from your brat in a local fair if not for a mirror maze he or she cannot get out of. House of Mirrors? That's an example of how bad mirrors found their purpose. There wouldn't be magic, the whole smoke and mirrors, if not for the latter. Before computers were calculating fractals, for 200 years those were made by mirrors in toys known as kaleidoscopes, which will never give you the same picture twice. If you want to make your small room look bigger, put large mirrors there. They will create an illusion of space. Mirrors can also be used to make the dark corners look brighter, so you won't go bankrupt on bulbs and electricity bills. While talking about corners, you must have noticed the convex mirrors on the street that allow you to see the object behind the corner. One of the things that can test the self-consciousness of an intelligent being is the mirror test, or MSR, mirror self-recognition. If I know that the person in the mirror is me, I am self-aware. Therefore, some say I have a soul, or am of higher intelligence. I purposefully said being in the beginning, because humans are not the only inhabitants of planet Earth that are self-conscious. Some animals, like great apes, we, chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans, and finally, one gorilla, passed. Although gorillas for some time were thought they can't pass, smaller monkeys failed the test, the same as giant pandas and sea lions. European magpies passed the test as the first birds in the world. Pigeons don't pass the test on their own, but can be trained to do so. Dolphins pass, orcas pass, elephants as well are self-aware. Although only one elephant passed the test. And fish! The only known fish species to pass is tiny tropical cleaner fish. How is the test conducted on animals? An animal is anesthetized and is then marked with paint or sticker on a part of a body the animal cannot see without a mirror like forehead or throat. If the animal, after being presented with a mirror, tries to remove the mark, touch it or stares very long on the tagged part of the body, it passes. The control tags are transparent to ensure that the test animals don't react to touch or smell. The test is passed when an animal doesn't try to remove the colored tag in the absence of a mirror or doesn't try to remove a transparent tag. You probably already noticed that a cute weenie dog is not on the list. Hmm. Dogs are tricky, because their primary sense is smell, not sight, so they fail the MSR test. But don't worry, dog lovers, there are some intelligence tests where dogs beat even the smartest monkeys. Cats are also cute, but don't pass the test as well. My bet is 
Cats are too much self-aware and don't entertain human servants with their stupid tests. MSR and humans? Okay. Children are anesthetic. Okay, okay, they are not. In humans, it is called the rouge test, because a rouge makeup dot is placed on a baby's face. A baby is then placed in front of the mirror. From the age of 6 to 12 months, the child usually sees a companion in the mirror's reflection. Embarrassment and self-admiring start at 12 months. At 14 to 20 months, children demonstrate avoidance. Finally, when they are 18 months old, half of them can recognize the reflection in the mirror as their own, and when they do, they are in so-called mirror stage. Like everything in life, this test is not 100% perfect. Some children basically may not care if they have a rouge dot on their faces. Maybe some of us are not narcissistic, which from Greek mythology means falling in love with one's own reflection. Among other creatures that may pass the test are pigs. So, by eating bacon, you basically are getting smarter while your arteries are being clogged. And manta rays. Fish with the biggest brain. Since 2012, some experiments with artificial intelligence and mirrors have been conducted. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's most sentient of them all? Have you heard of spectrophobia, also called catoptrophobia? It's fear of mirrors. The famous Bloody Mary or Candyman Scare Challenge is a great example of that. A person's brain registers the feeling that mirror shows something lurking behind them, or when the lights are dim, they sense that their reflection smiles back at them, while they don't. There are also neurological diseases like prosopagnosia, causing persons not to recognize themselves in a mirror, or mirror image agnosia, the inability to recognize objects as reflection despite subject's awareness that he or she is looking at the mirror. We also have mirror writing, often used by emergency services, so you know when to make way when you look into the rear mirror. Some people can and do use mirror writing. For example, Leonardo da Vinci, Italian Renaissance genius, most of his notes wrote this way. It's speculated that he did it because as a left-handed, it must have been easier for him to write from right to left. Writing from left to right for a left-handed would have rather been messy, so he wanted to prevent the ink from being smeared by his hand. But when he wrote official letters, he wrote normally. It is proved that higher proportion of left-handed people are better mirror writers than the rest of us. Maybe because, like with Leonardo, it is more natural for them to write backwards. Moreover, 15% of left-handed people have the language centers in both cerebral hemispheres, making it easy or even natural for them to read and write backwards. Everyone knows breaking mirror equals 7 years of bad luck. But where did it come from? Where did Shakespeare find this idea to put it into the mentioned play Richard II? It has its origins in ancient Rome. Romans believed that human soul renews itself every 7 years. So, if a mirror was broken when a person was in poor health, this state of malady would be suspended for seven years. The remedies to that were burying the mirror pieces, throwing them into running water, or smashing them to smithereens to make them unable to reflect anything. People can also wait seven hours, one hour for each year of bad luck, before cleaning the mirror bits. Or make a sign of the cross by a $5 bill. It's not clear why, but perhaps to show the text in God we trust. At any rate, in my understanding, 
people outside the US must exchange their money for that. To this day, in some cultures when person dies, all mirrors are covered, so their soul wouldn't be trapped in a reflection. Also, a mirror falling and breaking from a wall on its own is considered a death omen. Well, it's a relic of the past, because if a mirror could cost as much as a farm or a ship, no wonder that somebody could pay for its breaking with their lives. That's the way I see it. Mirrors. The very first Ultra HD resolution displays in human history. Some use it to check if the lipstick is smeared, some to signal a plane on a desert island, and some to confirm if a child is self-aware. Thank you for watching. Now you'll never look at the mirror the same way again. Till the next time, viewers. Subscribe. 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 <laughs>